Hey there, my friends, Dan Deegan here. And before this special edition of the HPLS podcast, I wanted to bring you up to speed. On March 27th, we're holding the first ever High Performance Summit at the Mississauga Convention Center. So in the body of this podcast, whether you're listening to this on audio on my podcast, whether you're watching it on YouTube, wherever you're listening or hearing this, go to www.dandegan.com forward slash high hyphen performance hyphen summit and register for the high performance summit this is going to be an industry event you're not going to want to miss i mean we got customer panels we got industry expert panels we got everybody you need to know to get every question answered that you've ever had when it comes to sales customer service management anything all of the above dealing with people like me salespeople. sometimes we can be difficult all of the above, we're gonna answer your questions there. I hope to see you at the High Performance Summit. In the meantime, enjoy this special best of edition podcast with Marcus Ogden, Nick Redstone, and myself. Take care, my friends, we'll see you soon. Well, hey everybody, you know, uh, we're very, very, very excited to share this video with you. So as you know, the High Performance Summit is coming up and you, you know, as much as we're still at the recording of this, you know, 51 days away, it is going to be here before you know it because when we first started looking at this some 80 days out, all of a sudden it's 50. You know, um, it's crazy how this is getting quicker and quicker and quicker. But you know what? Today, we've got some momentum building for you. So I've got Nick and Marcus on the call and we're gonna give you some top questions that we feel you either want answers to that maybe are lingering in your head or, or maybe, you know, when you put your head down at night, Welcome to the HPLS podcast. Live, relevant, and high performance information, conversations, and education weekly. And you close your eyes. You know, in those, those quiet moments, you really start thinking to yourself and you start questioning your ability. So what this video is for and what we are about to do in the next 35, 40 minutes for you, we hope will bring you to the next level of joy, energy, excitement, and motivation. So with no further ado, Nick and Marcus, thank you so much for doing this again, and I'm looking forward to this, guys. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Just saw my brother. All right. So we are going to start with a question from Nick. All right, let's kick off with this, Dan. What do you think, Dan and Marcus, what do you think everyone in that room is going to be wanting to get out of the event? Mm, that's a good one, Nick. Go ahead, Marcus, answer that. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Marcus, you want to go first? So what I think people are going to be looking for in the room is connections to get with people who can help them grow their business. I tell people all the time, not about what you know so much as who you know. So being in a room full of very successful individuals that really want to get, you know, build their network, grow their inner circle, I'm so excited to have everybody come to this event to really, in my opinion, what I feel is going to be so big is growing their inner circle and helping them get connections to raise their bar of business and hold them more accountable to get to the next level. You know, Marcus, I love that answer. Um, I'm going to dovetail off that answer because I believe that too. I believe, you know, in, in the core, everybody wants to, you know, meet new people, find out new strategies. I think they're also coming um, to build that strategy, that structure, that foundation of how they sell, how they operate in customer service, you know, how they can really help a customer achieve more, do more and be more, help that customer achieve their goals. And all of that is the foundation of every business. You know, I will share with, with all of you, if, if these answers are resonating, just understand it's the application of the knowledge and information that you get, right? You're going to get a lot of education, right? Mark is going to talk to you about mental toughness and everything, and that's going to be huge, but it's that application. Would you guys not agree? And I'd like both of you to jump in here. Um, that application of the information that Marcus, you're going to share, that Nick's going to share, that you're going to get from all the panels is going to be like the platinum, never mind gold, it's going to be platinum for all of you. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree, Dan. Um, look, look, I would say this, guys. I would say that people will be aware of where they are and we're going to help them to get to where they want to be. You know, there'll be some gold nuggets and there'll be, there'll be some takeaways and some gold nuggets in there that are just going to have them have that light bulb moment where they go, oh, that's what I'm doing right now. That's what I should be doing, yeah? Agreed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, that's amazing. 
Okay, next question. Marcus, fire away. All right. My question is, how would you teach salespeople the importance of strategic planning? How do you all plan to kind of get all the salespeople that are in the room to help teach them the importance of creating a strategic plan to help them improve their sales tactics? <laughs> That's a really good one, Marcus. Okay, so I'll take a stab at this first. So how would we teach you to help you improve your strategic sales tactics? First and foremost is create a structure. You know, I can tell you right now, having a structure, a process, a step-by-step, -step, regardless of how long you've been in the industry, is critical. I just recently, and it's amazing, Marcus, you're asking this question, I just lost a pretty significant account. And I lost it afterwards. Originally, I'm thinking, you know, the ego kind of started to kick in. You're like, you know, how could I have lost this? I'm, I'm the most qualified for it. You know, and then and having a conversation with, you know, one of my new mentors that might be on this call, Mr. Nick Redstone, him and I are talking. And he says, well, you know, Dan, did you go in and talk about this? And I went, oh, my God, I forgot the most critical step, clarity. What, it is, what is it that you want out of this meeting to everybody in the meeting? And I lost a significant part of business. And you know what I realized after? Because, you know, you have that way you do things. And you hang up the phone sometimes. You, you walk away from the meeting. You're like, I, it just didn't go. It didn't flow. It didn't do what I did, what I normally do. And that's because you're not sticking to your plan. You're not sticking to that strategic structure you put in place that goes you from A to B to C to D, right? It's baby steps. And I realized I forgot what I preach a lot, which is clarity understanding exactly what everyone wanted out of the meeting. So to create a strategic sales strategy is going to create a step-by-step -step process that you hone and master every single step of the way and you never miss a step, never skip. That's my answer. I love that, Dan. I love that. And, and look, what I would add to that, guys, I'd say this. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Right, one of the things that you have to think about is you've got to have a plan in place. I know that salespeople, they don't tend to like to plan, right? It's more sort of the case, I'll go and see this client, I'll have this conversation, it's going to work. But if you're actually working out your target, your quota, you're trying to work out how you're going to hit your quota, break it down into chunks. Don't try and do $3 million in one month. Don't try and do $1 million in one month. Break it down to how many hours you need to work per day and how many calls, how many uh, people you're seeing per day to actually start to hit that number, right? Most people go, oh, this is my quota. I'm not going to hit it. You break it down. If you plan that into chunks and say, right, this is what I need each week. This is what I'm going to achieve each week. You work out what you need to do each week to achieve what you need to do to close those deals. Fantastic. Fantastic yeah, answer. Marcus, how do you answer that? Well, to me, it's all about putting yourself in a position where you start setting goals, and like Nick said, realistic goals. A lot of my clients, what they do is they sometimes will do something and they'll set such unrealistic goals. And if they don't meet those goals, then they start to get down on themselves. I said, well, how do you plan to achieve that when you have a job you're working, family, young kids, you have other businesses you have going on, you're putting too much pressure on yourself to achieve what you want for the long haul because you're trying to get so much things done unrealistically. So to me, I would tell people, set a strategic plan, have your targets, like Nick said, put in the chunks, but set goals and be realistic. It's better to exceed a realistic goal than to fall short of an unrealistic goal. I love that. I love that. You know, I've often told salespeople, you know, when you're creating your projections, Understand, if you don't have a full funnel, don't expect to double your business next month. If you have nobody in the pipeline, you have nobody about to drop, you have no new sales because you haven't made a sales call in six months. You know, don't expect to double your business next month. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. All right. So I guess it's my question now, right, boys? Mm -hmm. yeah, boy. All yeah, right. Boy, so my first question for you two rock stars is, what makes a salesperson elite? All right, all right, I'm going to go for this, right? So I think the key thing, I've talked about this quite a bit a lot uh, in the past, Dan, is what makes a salesperson elite is planning to actually be elite, planning to actually achieve something, all right? You can't just sit there and say, okay, I'm an elite salesperson because I closed one or two deals, right? What are you doing with your career? How are you developing so that you can go and get more deals, 
you can develop yourself, you can build your own skills. And the key thing here I have to say is, it's mostly about attitude. Those who wake up in the morning and know that they're gonna walk into an opportunity and walk out with the sale, they're the elite professionals, mate. They're the ones that believe in themselves. They know they've done the hard yards. They know they've put the grind in place. And they know that when they go and see someone, they're going to have good conversations, right? They've taken the opportunity to learn from people around them. They've maybe got a mentor. They've maybe brought on some advice. And by using that and implementing that and embedding it, they will become and are successful. Sounds good. I'm going to piggyback a little bit off exactly what you said. And I'm going to take it just to put a little spin on it. To me, elite salespeople have to have the mindset that they have to be always cognitive, not emotional. And they have to have that tough mental mentality mindset that if they hear the word no, it's not going to knock them off track. I talk to so many people through sales calls, meetings, social media. They say, man, you know, when I don't get that, when I get that no, I get mad. I get frustrated. I'm like, well, what did I do wrong? Well, maybe you didn't do anything wrong. Maybe it was just the person who didn't want to buy the product that day. Maybe they, that person had a bad day. I don't know what it is. But that was one of my big problems, fellas, was when I was told no a lot several years ago, I would get mad. I would get angry. And then like I heard you say earlier, Dan, that I'd stop making calls, then my pipeline started to get empty. And then I was like, where are my leads at? There are no leads. So if you have no leads, you have no pipeline, you have no sales. So to me, elite mindset or elite salespeople can push through the adversity. And if they hear the words, no, they say, thank you very much. I appreciate it. They keep going to the next person, but they do so in a cognitive manner, not an emotional, distraught, angry temperament. You know, love I, I love both of those answers because they, they, for my answer, both of you hit it on the head. I would add one thing to capitalize on both of yours is when the prospect says no, I always think about somebody in an elite position tries to find out if there's anything they can do in their sales approach, the call, the mannerism, something that can help them raise their level, raise that bar. And I've also found gentlemen, and please tell me if you guys see it as well, when we are making sales calls or trying to prospect, if we educate ourselves and get a little gold nugget, you know, even if it's every five calls, that keeps that emotion, that drive, that ambition to make more calls because it's not necessarily a no, it's a little bit of a learning education moment. Would you not agree? Agree. 100%. Yeah. All and, right. So Nick, it's your that, question. Add, Sorry. Go, go ahead. Very quickly to add, add to that, um, Dan, you know, it's that saying of, you know, once burned, but now you're going to learn, you know? So you realize you've been burned, but now it's time to learn. And I agree with what you said, Mark, it's a hundred percent. Absolutely. All right. So Nick, your question, fire away, brother. All right, here's one that I'm really interested with you two guys, right? What is the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome to be successful in your careers? <laughs> the biggest challenge. Well, go first, Dan, you want me to go first? No, you go, Marcus, you go. I want to hear this. So what I had to overcome was the stigma of being a former NFL player that wanted to be a speaker. And so many people thought that just because I was an NFL athlete and that that's all I could talk about. Like, so I had to overcome that stigma, that stamp. And a lot of that was my fault because I was marketing myself in that way. And then one day I woke up and said, wow, football was a part of my life. So I have to, it's nothing wrong with saying I used to play football, but I can't lead with that is all I am as a football player. So this is when I had to make some decisions and then I finally overcame that hurdle when I woke up one day and I said, I'm going to market myself as a national and international keynote speaker that used to be a football player instead of being a football player that is trying to be an international national keynote speaker. I love that, Mark. You know, I could see that, Marcus. Right, because everyone knows you as that football player, right? And you're trying to you're you're in essence rebranding a brand. You're right? Myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, um, the biggest challenge I've had to overcome was 
I got into the logistics and transportation industry at just about three months before I turned 17. Um, and at the time, the company I was working for, the owner would say, you can't go see customers. You can't go do any of these meetings. You can't go to any of the functions because you still smell like pee. And, you know, at first you kind of laugh about it. And he says, no, 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 I'm serious. You are probably younger than a lot of the people you're going to meet, a lot of people you're going to do business with. You're younger than their kids. And if their kids are a screw up, they automatically see you in a different light. And, you know, when you, when you first hear that, um, you might think to yourself, oh, okay, well, you know, that's fine. You just, you get older. But, you know, at my age right now, at 43, it literally took me until I was 37 years old to realize that people in their 30s, you know, top 40, under 40 kind of thing exist. And that mental block from that one scenario that somebody I truly believe was not trying to block me mentally for my entire life or at that, you know, at this point, half of it anyways, um, they were just trying to make a point where, you know, I might really know what I do, but if they have a perceived opinion of their children who might be a screw up, they immediately perceive you like that. So that for me was the biggest block, that internal block where, you know, I would find myself really coming close to what people would call greatness, people would call success. And then almost subconsciously put, putting the brakes on and say, I can't do this. I'm too young. Nobody's going to take me seriously. I'm too young. I mean, all the way back to, you know, pretty much 2010, 2012, 2013. We're only talking the last four or five years that I've really broke out and realized and come to grips in terms with myself that I could be more big, bigger, better and help people along the way. That'd probably be my biggest challenge I've overcome. That's awesome, Dan. You, you still look like you're in your twenties to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know what? When I get out of bed and things crack, I don't feel like it anymore, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you get up in the morning, you start your back, hey, Marcus, you know? I hey, look, guys, I just want to come at this from a different angle, right? This is something to, you know, to think about for some people. So I fast tracked my career. I was a retail assistant retail manager and I suddenly uh, became a national sales manager looking after six staff and six newspapers overnight, right? And I'm working through my career and just fast tracking everything and just making sure I was the best that I could be and do that. I realized that I actually burned myself out very quickly. And one of the things I really want to talk to people about is making sure that you don't burn yourself out really quickly, right? End up two and a half years ago having a full-blown panic disorder, which I worked through in 12 months, had a lot of cognitive work and, and made that really effective. And it's made my sales and the way I approach people really effective as well. But all I'd say is, you know, take time, enjoy the journey and work through the process, you know, because life's short. And if you do that, you just, you know, it, you know it's, it's, not a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Just enjoy it, you know. So a lot of people want to try and be at their A game right now in sales. And maybe you're not there right now. Maybe you need to learn to do that. But my advice is don't try and fast track everything, right? You do burn out really quickly. That's a great piece of advice, Nick. Great piece of advice. You know, I mean, especially, you know, just let's look at the three of us, right? All three of us entrepreneurs, all three of us starting to rebrand ourselves in a new way. How many hours a day do each of you work? I know for me, I'm always working. You know, I mean, I was just, as you guys know, I was just away on vacation and I'm up every morning on vacation before 6 a.m. working on my laptop, preparing presentations for when I get back. I mean, it's nonstop, right? And I, I see that. I see that, Nick. That's, that's a great point for you to make to everybody out there. It's the brain that doesn't sleep. You know, it's not so much how many hours you work. Marcus, you'll know this, Dan, you'll know this. It's the brain that doesn't turn off. You're lying there at night going, there's a thought. <laughs> Absolutely right. All right. So now my question, boys, here's one. So obviously there is a lot more components to this question. My question for both of you is, if you were to give any salesperson or team member, whether it be a support team member, you know, manager team member, in it, whatever degree they were at, one piece of advice to help them scale their business and their life, what would that one singular piece of advice be? You wanna go, Nick? Well, you okay, so, so to me, what I would tell that individual is you have got to get the right team around you. Plain and simple. I mean, to that degree, nobody can scale a business of any You've got to do everything by yourself. 
you will eventually burn out. And I've been there. And once you burn out, it's really hard to reignite that candle or reignite that wick. So I would tell people, and I tell people all the time, you're only as good as the team and the partners you have around you. So if you want to scale any type of business, you have got to build the right team. And it all starts with you, with you, with your character, with what you do, and how you treat other people to help you build that right team and the empire where everybody around you at the top are your, are your friends and everyone is living the best life together. Love that answer. Love that answer. Go, Nick. Look, I'm going to come at it from a slightly different angle again. Um, and it's a bit biased because I'm a, a consultant working with businesses. But my advice is, you know, read a book before you write a book, right? Learn about how to grow your business if you're not sure. And like, for example, I, with my business, I removed the guessing game from making sales completely, gentlemen, right? It's about going, these are the steps you take so that you don't have to go through all the pitfalls every other company does to find out that's how something doesn't work. So don't be afraid to reach out and bring in a consultant, bring in some advice, bring in some experts to help you to get over those hurdles a lot faster then the time it might take you to sort of work out by trial and error what you need to do to get it right. Because if you work through a process and you're looking to try and get it right the first time you can, it's more about knowing someone has the experience to walk you through that, right? So once you do reach out to people and say, hey, look, I want to grow my business. I want to scale my business. You'll find lots of people will respond to you by saying, have you spoke to this person? Have you done this? Have you done that? Have you Googled this? Have you Googled that? So don't be afraid to reach out and get some support when you're looking to scale your business. You know, I'm, I'm going to slide right in between the both of you on this one, I think. And I, I love both those answers. You know, I would say to people, you know, you have to bring people along for the ride, which ties right in with Marcus having that really good team. And you have to always be educated. You have to be that person that's always looking for a different style backhand to win the game. You can't be that person that is, is so stonewalled that nobody's advice will help you. Nobody's advice can change what you're doing or maximize what you're doing. You know, even if it's a person, if you're a veteran salesperson and you've been in any gig, I don't care what it is, that person that's been in it for two days with a completely different perspective might really be able to help you along the way. So always be a learner, always educate yourself, you know, and always bring people along for the ride. I guess that's two things, isn't it, boys? That kind of... <laughs> All right, so Nick, your question is up, my friend. All right, look, I'm thinking about the people in the room. And I really want to know, because you've got me from a point of view of implementing and embedding sales strategies, Dan, you've got you from a point of view of sales planning and, and looking at how you work through, you know, making yourself an elite salesperson. Marcus, you've got you with that real mentality, sports mind from the point of view of the mental now business mind in terms of how you become an overachiever and get the best out of your business. Who should come to this event, lads? Who should make sure they've got a seat and not miss this event? Dan? Oh, okay. You know, I'll take this one first, Marcus, if you're okay. Of so course. who should get a seat and not miss this event? Anyone who has a career in transportation and logistics and a career in sales or customer service. Because this event, even though it's very streamlined and marshaled, Towards, cost, towards transportation and logistics, the speakers that are here with me right now, Marcus and Nick, the panelists of all customers, the panelists of industry experts, the panelists of legal, insurance, and it will give you a very good idea of the ripple effect from one industry to another to another. If you're in manufacturing, you want to be there because that ripple effect in transportation will raise your costs. If you're in sales and manufacturing, you are going to want to be there because Nick is going to teach you some wild closing and client maintaining techniques. Marcus is going to teach you some incredible mental toughness techniques, and I'm going to teach you some killer strategy. So that's going to benefit you. If you're in customer service, what better room to be in than a room of people that their business is serving customers? Learn from us. Talk to us. Get the v and, and this is not a plug for a higher ticket price, get the VIP lunch. Because to spend an hour and a half sitting with somebody like Marcus and talking to him about mental toughness and what it took, not only to make it to the NFL, but then to rebrand his entire world 
to make it somewhere else, to lose a multi-million dollar company because he was too hard-headed to not see the light, not help other people, not be that education person. You know, to sit with Nick and say, when you said that, I got it. But there was this little tweak that I'm thinking and having that intellectual one-on-one -on -one educational conversation, that is the gold here. An hour and a half uninterrupted conversations with everyone. Somebody on a panel is going to say something to you and you're going to be like, that is insane. I want to ask them more and more. And maybe you're not. I don't want to say confident, but maybe you're a little shy to stand up in front of 350 people and ask a question. That's okay. Do it at lunch. Do it anonymously. Because with the anonymous questions, with the pre-poll questions that's going to be going out, with everything, you can literally get every single in answer Sorry, you're looking for in one day in one room. That's my answer. Grab a mic and drop it, Dan. That's awesome. <laughs> what, I, what I would say is, like Dan said, anybody that wants to learn the importance of delivering value to their clients on a consistent basis, if anyone wants to learn how to deliver value on a sales call to any potential client, they need to be in the room. Strategies on how to get better, to take your business from A to Z, not A to B or A to C, A to Z. Be in the room. If you're someone who wants to learn how to have the grit and the mindset that when they hear no, it brushes off their back, they keep on going down the road, they keep knocking on doors, and they keep living their best life, be at the conference. So it's anyone that wants to really enhance their business and get around like-minded people to have them teach them about value, customer service, sales strategy, mental toughness, mindset. If these are things that you want in your life, you need to be at this conference. Excellent. So very quickly, share with us what you think. Yeah, very quickly. We went through a lot of what the transportation industry are going through in Canada right now eight years ago, Dan, and I've got some really great insights in terms of how you save your customer, some really great insights in terms of how you make that customer a long-term lifetime client, which we'll talk about. Um, I think the key thing is if you're there from a point of view of sales, let's remove the guessing game from sales. If you're there with a sales career and you want to have good meetings, you want to go in and meet people and know you're walking out with the opportunity with the business or the next steps, you need to be there. If you're there to find out about planning and you want to find out about how strategically you plan your life out in terms of how you're going to have a better career scale with your business, you need to be there. If you're there because you're looking for a mindset like Marcus Ogden can share with you, that's why you need to be there, guys. You can't miss this event. That would be my opinion. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so I've got a question for the two of you. Now, this is kind of like an audible question because I just came up with it now because I'm thinking, I don't want to ask my third last question because it's, it's too similar to the one piece of advice you would give that I asked last time. So my question is going to be, when it comes to mental clarity and structure, where do you rate that on a scale of one to 10, meaning one being the first thing you have to have or 10 being the last thing you have to have for any salesperson or anybody that's looking to provide value to a customer? It's number one to me, but if you don't have mental clarity, if you don't know where you are as far as what needs to be done better, what needs to be clear, what your customer needs, but more importantly, if you don't even know what you wanna do or where you wanna go, if you have no clarity in your life, it's like you have no purpose, you have no vision, you have no, you have no roadmap. And if you don't have a roadmap or you don't have clarity in your life, you will never reach your full potential. You will always be giving, you will always be getting what life hands you versus you going out and taking what you want. So to me, mental clarity is, is number one. If you don't have mental clarity, it doesn't matter what anything else around you is, you will not go from A to Z. It's almost impossible. Yeah, fantastic. Look, I, I, this is a really interesting one, Dan. For me, honestly, mental clarity is so important and the cognitive behind that, it's like driving at night with the lights off in your car. You've just got no idea where you're going. You're not going to recognize any signposts. You're not going to recognize what's about to crash into you. You know, it's, it's really risky business. You know, mental state is so important. 
um, learning how to be more effective, learning how to transition hard times, learning how to work through a process to achieve a goal, all of that comes from mental clarity. For me, it's absolutely number one. Once you've got that mental clarity, I believe you can achieve anything and overcome any obstacle, but you must find that mental clarity first. You know, I, I love it, guys. And, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of come in from, I'm going to totally reverse on what I was going to say as the answer because all of you guys got that. Um, everyone who's watching this, you heard what I said about clarity when I talked to you about not having it and going into the meeting and losing the business. With what Nick and Marcus just said, if you do not have crystal clarity, an absolute rock solid structure and step-by-step -step process, you need to come to the HPLS High Performance Summit. It is a must that you come and it is a must that you get at least the elite ticket with a VIP lunch, at least. Because when you walk out of that day, and think about it like this, you have an opportunity to invest one day to get the complete plan, complete structure, complete strategy in a step-by-step -step format to really scale the rest of your life. I don't want that to sound like a sales pitch. That's reality. Would you guys not agree with me? For sure. hundred percent. hundred percent. Excellent. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Cause I know we're running right at the brink of the time. Did we all get three questions in there? Did we all get three? No, I, I have one qu I have one question for you guys. I want, I like to kind of, I think it's really good to end on this from perspective of you all talking about, you know, what you need to do, who you need to be around and how you need to position yourself and be around the right people. What is the difference between a confident salesperson and an egotistical salesperson that literally does not know how to turn off the confidence? And what do you think a good salesperson has as far as being confident and staying in that space, which is great, but, then they can, but if they keep doing what they're doing and they don't learn how to humble themselves, they become egotistical as the salesperson. And then they usually end up, in my opinion, self-destructing. So I would like to hear from you all. What do you think as far as a good salesperson who's, who's confident to one who's egotistical, how can someone not end up in that bad egotistical salesperson space? Okay. Uh, Nick, do you want, can, I, can I grab this first? Do you mind? All yours. All yours. Okay. So, um, live that, been there, done that, lost a $22 million company because of it. So the, the arrogant, confident, the, the, the egotistical salesperson is all about what you're doing to me. That's the type of salesperson that says, do you know how long I've been servicing you? I've broke my back for you. And this is what you're going to do for me. The confident salesperson that is in it for the right reasons, which is value to the people that they work with, longevity, long-term high performance relationships says, I understand the situation. I understand what's going on in your world. How can I help fix it? So in the end, we both walk out of this and scale together. Because with every, every high, there's a low. You wouldn't know a good paycheck unless you got a bad one, right? You don't have an up without a down. That's the reality of it. As a confident salesperson, you're continuing to sell. So if something happens, that blip in your business isn't devastating to the point where you have to turn on that life or death kind of uh, um, feelings, that, that, um, you know, step, that step, that process, that life or death. Like, I need to save this or I need to do something. Or I need to do this because I think that's when, and I'd love both your opinions on this, I think that's when really that ego part of most people kick kick in is in that life and death when things are happening and, and they think with that ego driven brain of what's in it for me. Marcus, it's a fantastic question. So for me, you've got to leave your ego at the door and before long it's going to happen. Like Dan said, in his sales career it happened to him. It certainly happened to me. I've washed away a massive deal because I walked in thinking it was a done deal and I didn't put the time and effort into proposal. I was lazy in my approach and it happened you know, 20 years ago and it'll never happen to me again. The reason I say that is an egotistical person is driven by how much money goes in their wallet. A genuine confident salesperson is driven by what solution they can provide to your business to add value to your business. The ego will eventually run out because what happens is these people get to a point where there's burnout 
or they get to a point where they actually realize, you know what, this is not doing anyone any favors. I'm coming in too hyped up. I'm talking about me. And I use this saying, guys, don't lead from your business. Don't tell them about you for 15 minutes to an hour. You've got to find out about them. Well, an ego-driven person struggles with that, right? So a confident salesperson will come in, find out about the business, have a chat, find out about the, the pain points, find out about the challenges, find out about the things that they can help with your business. Whereas an ego person is going to walk in and say, hey, I've got a deal for you. Here, here's, the, here's the dotted line, you know, sign here sort of thing. So it, it, after a period of time, you learn not to be an egotistical salesperson. But if you're at that space where you don't know the difference between confidence and ego, you're going to find out pretty quickly. Can I piggyback on that for a sec, guys? So also, if you're an egotistical salesperson, there's only a matter of time before a confident, value-driven salesperson calls your customer and you will lose that customer. Because the customers want to deal with people that focus on them, not, not them, meaning focus on them, the customer, not themselves and what's in it for them. Great answers, guys. Fantastic. All right, guys. So listen, everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed this quick powwow uh, with the three of us. It's going to be a massively incredible time. I'm sure you could feel the energy and the excitement just in the three people going back and forth. Imagine this at a full scale for eight hours. It's going to be incredible. Make sure you register for this event. Take care, my friends. We'll see you all next time. Hey there, guys. Listen, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. I mean, listen, yeah, it was about 40 minutes long, but I hope you got a lot of the content and you're really going to take action on that content. Remember, the High Performance Summit is March 27th. I really want to see you guys there. If you're in the Mississauga, Greater Toronto, or anywhere in Ontario, heck, even if you're in Montreal, 550 kilometers away, I suggest you drive in to this event because it is going to be earth-shaking the amount of knowledge, education, tactical, you know, deployment strategies, everything, sales, operations, industry experts to pick their brain. Make sure you go and get the elite or ultimate package. It's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Again, thanks for watching this. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.